Hey, friendly neighborhood immunologist here, and today's video is on antibody dependent enhancement, or ADE. A lot of you have asked in the comment section, what the heck is this? What is ADE? And do we need to worry about it? So today I'm going to explain to you the phenomenon of antibody dependent enhancement, how basically an antibody can give a virus a second key, and that involves B cells, antibodies, and macrophages. So let's get started. Before I explain what antibody dependent enhancement is, you need to know where antibodies come from. And they come from B cells here in orange. B cells are created in your bone marrow and typically spend their life in your lymph nodes. So what do antibodies do? They can do a number of things for you. I've drawn the top three things they do for you here. Number one is binding to toxins. Number two is binding to bacteria. And number three is binding to viruses. So when an antibody binds to something, it stops it from entering your cell. This is called neutralization. So you can see up top here, there's an orange antibody neutralizing a toxin. If you're ever bitten by a snake and go to the hospital, the antivenom is actually a horse antibody. So you can see here that no matter where antibodies bind, bacteria or viruses, they can stop them from interacting with your cells. And your all right, I'll explain one more thing about antibodies before I show you how antibody dependent enhancement work all together. This is an orange antibody, or if you read about um, online, you might have heard them called immune the same term. So the antibody here is primarily in orange, and then the top part is in purple, and I'll explain why in just a minute. Up here, this top part of the Y is called the variable region. This is the part that binds the toxin, the virus, the bacteria, and it's incredibly specific for only one piece of one protein. So you could have multiple different variable regions that all bind to one bacteria or one virus, which is the constant region. The constant thing is constant. So if I was to give you antibodies, the constant region of mine would be incredibly similar to the constant region of your antibody. Now it's constant for a couple of reasons. One is in here. So it basically binds to the target, binds to the target antigen. There we go, binds to target. Whereas the constant region binds to the immune cell, typically an immune cell like a macrophage. So if you've watched some of my other videos, you're probably familiar with what a macrophage is. If you're not, it's an innate, meaning in the order lives side, and immune cell things and breaking them down. Okay, so you actually have five different types of antibodies in your body. There's IgM, IgD, IgG, and he flipped out. So for example, this could be IgA. Change this out to a different constant region. It could be, here we go, flipping it out. It could be Ig. So it mixes and matches your constant region. Change the type of antibody it is. And it basically gives it different types of superpowers. So the immunoglobulin G, G stands for gamma, and that is the immunoglobulin type for anti-enhancing GG binds to macrophages. All right, now we can put all of this together. Here's a vitamin for a reason. One of the proteins is proteins is because viruses have different proteins on their surface. So here comes a B cell antibody against the protein on the virus. Now, if it works well, it neutralizes the virus, meaning this virus can no longer enter your cells. And here we go, for the first time, here's your pink macrophage. It's gonna to bind to the immunoglobulin GG, and then it's going to be able to consume this virus. Kill it. Okay, so that was the happy scenario. That's when everything goes right. Antibody dependent enhancing antibodies go wrong. So instead of binding perfectly to this green protein, this antibody is gonna to bind to the orange protein, and it's gonna bind in a way that's not very helpful. So here this is able to still interact with your cells. So every virus has key number one. Every virus has a spike protein of some kind that allows it to enter cells. For example, polio's key allows it to enter neurons, which is why it could cause paralyzation. And COVID-19's key allows it to enter any cells with angiotensin II receptor or ACE2, which happens to be very much concentrated in your lungs and in your lungs. So as long as the key is available, because there's no antibody on it, this virus is going to enter your regular old cells. I'm drawing this here. These little wheel looking things is a virus that has entered your cell. 
This virus is making thousands upon thousands of copies. And when it does that, the virus can leave in one of two ways. It can leave through a process called budding, which means that dozens, two hundred copies leave without cell. Or it can leave rather violently. I'll try to show you that down here. It can leave violently through a process called viral lysis, where it explodes your cells and spreads the virus all throughout your body. Okay, so key number one is a protein that the virus has naturally. Now here's antibody dependent enhancement. You can see the just come along to bind to an antibody, the immunoglobulin G. This is normally a good thing, but if the antibody doesn't bind in a correct neutralizing manner, the virus is still able to escape. So key number two, the virus gets to now enter macrophages. It's not been able to enter macrophages before, and nor would it be able to without the IgG antibody. So here we go. Key number two, antibody-dependent enhancement is when viruses get a second key to enter your macrophage. I'm going to draw a similar. We've got a circle here, the little wheel. Indicating the virus has entered the macrophage. It's also going to start making copies of itself. But breaking into the macrophage is a little bit like breaking into the house of they are not without one. They're going to fight back. So the macrophage is going to drop these little red things here. These are called reactive oxygen species. Viruses, particularly RNA viruses, are very weak against reactive oxygen species. So although now the virus can enter macrophages, macrophages will fight back. So some of the macrophage will make copies of the virus. It will make the viral infection worse. However, some of the macrophages will fight back and destroy the virus. But it does mean overall that there is a second key. Key one is the spike protein given to the virus, and then key two is an antibody that doesn't bind correctly. And if you want to read more about the genome, I'm drawing for you the name of the receptor on the macrophage. The macrophage has an FC gamma receptor, and that's the one that binds to the antibody called the immunoglobulin G, in case you want to read about that on your own. So when has this happened in the past? Antibody-dependent enhancement has happened naturally during many different viral infections. For example, during the dengue virus, you can see here in red, there are antibodies that don't bind correctly to the outside of the virus, and then they end up getting taken up via the macrophage through the FC gamma receptor here, making copies of themselves and then making the infection worse. So dengue virus is an example of how ADE can happen um, during natural infection. Another virus where this happens is called respiratory syncytial virus, or RSV. Now, RSV is a particularly terrible childhood virus. My son had it when he was about seven, eight months old, and it was probably the sickest he's ever been. So researchers tried to make a vaccine for it. And what they did is they induced a different type of ADE we haven't talked about. You can see here in the corner, there's a clump of three antibodies and three viral particles. Now this can happen on occasion, particularly in viruses that infect the lungs. Uh, the antibodies can make these clumps. The clumps activate the immune system in the lungs and then cause inflammation specifically in your alveoli and your lungs, which can make breathing harder. Um, so this vaccine made for RSV was abandoned because the antibodies created these clumps of antibody dependent enhancement. So is ADE happening now? The answer is no. Individual hospitals have been posting, uh, these are from August, August 22nd, I think August 21st, from individual hospitals. The one on the left is from a hospital in South Carolina. The one on the right is a hospital in Florida. And they're both showing that primarily the number of people hospitalized due to COVID are unvaccinated. Um, it's particularly evident on the number of people who are on ventilators. So you can see that if ADE was happening, these numbers would be flipped. People who would have antibodies would be doing worse, whereas people who are vaccinated are doing better and are less likely to be admitted to the hospital. Okay, this is the last point for the video, and that is why researchers and doctors chose the spike protein to create the current antibodies. It's very important because they're basing this off of research in the past. In the past, researchers tried to create vaccines for SARS and MERS, but they chose the M protein. You can see that here um, in purple. And that wasn't actually a good target. It ended up producing low levels of ADE. And so in the trials in animals, researchers saw this and abandoned it. Researchers are on their game. 
You can look at papers even before the vaccine trials began where researchers were bringing up concerns about ADE. So the medical community, the research community, they've known about this, they're on it, they're monitoring it, and they will let us know if something changes. But the reason they chose the spike protein is because you can see here, it's the key to the cell. It's in orange. It's the key to the cell, meaning that it allows entry into our cells. So if you block it with an antibody, now the spike protein can't talk to our cells. They can't enter our cells. So it is a much better target. On top of that, it's the key. How much can you change a key before it doesn't fit into the lock? So this is sort of boxing the virus into a corner and that if they change the spike protein too much, they won't be able to enter our cells. So the likelihood that the antibodies will continue to work against the spike protein are high. But like I said, the medical community is monitoring this and it is important to keep an eye on. I hope that was helpful. Um, yeah. All right. See you next week. Take care. Stay healthy. Bye.